but it's going to warm up this weekend. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay, folks, it is three minutes after. We're going to get started. We have a packed webinar today. Um, I want to say hello and welcome to friends and colleagues on, on the webinar today. Uh, and, and welcome to the Tourism Skill Shop, hosted by the State of Washington Tourism, SWT. My name is Matthew Ozuna, and I am the Destination Manager at SWT. I will moderate today's webinar on Search Engine Optimization, SEO. I'm broadcasting live from about 11 miles southwest of the entrance of Mount Rainier National Park. Uh, please utilize the chat, say hello, let us know where you're from, um, and feel free uh, to share comments in the chat and also uh, utilize the Q&A feature for questions. I will monitor both and address questions from the audience near the end of the webinar. Um, like I said, we have a packed agenda, so let's get started. The Tourism Skill Shop is one of many industry educational programs from the State of Washington Tourism. The webinar series will engage with colleagues across the tourism sector and broaden their industry knowledge, skills, and network. Each webinar will highlight a specific issue or skill for tourism professionals to ponder and discuss with industry experts. State of Washington Tourism will typically host live webinars of the Tourism Skill Shop on the third or fourth Thursday of every month from 10 to 11 a.m. These webinars will also be recorded and shared with registrants. So if you uh, can't make the, the live broadcast, still sign up, you'll get the recording, um, and hopefully you'll be able to engage with us on this content in other places. Uh, for the Tourism Skill Shop and other industry updates, visit the SWT website, sign up for the industry update newsletter, and follow SWT on LinkedIn. Um, and, oh, I should also mention, uh, tourism stakeholders may also join the SWT Facebook group for further discussion on topics related to the Tourism Skill Shop and other industry news, issues, and events. This webinar will focus on search engine optimization, SEO, and best practices for destination professionals. SEO is free, it's easy to learn, and plays an important role in digital marketing. An optimized website can improve its ranking and search engine results, or uh, results on, on the search engine page, <laughs> thereby increasing vis visibility and organic traffic. The guest speakers for this webinar will cover SEO fundamentals and showcase how to implement SEO recommendations using real world example, examples. Excuse me. Guest speakers include Dylan Scacchetti. Um, he's from Madden today. Welcome, Dylan. Uh, Marianne uh, Graff, she's our content manager at uh, State of Washington Tourism. And we have someone from uh, my neck of the woods, well, my hometown area, uh, Tyra Bleak. Uh, she is in charge of a winery in the Yakima Valley. Uh, she's the tasting room manager. Or um, am I say? did I get that right? Tasting room manager? Tyra? Yeah, general okay. manager. General yeah. manager, mm -hmm. that's it. So enough about me. You've seen me on a few of these webinars. I'll kind of give a short description of uh, Dylan's background, Mary Ann's and Tyra's, and then we'll jump into SEO. Uh, Dylan joined Madden Media in 2021. Um, he's a digital marketer with a passion for creating, uh, creating engaging web experience for both people and robots. Based in New York City, he specializes in SEO, user experience, web design, and drinks a lot of coffee. Dylan, I think your next uh, vacation should be to Seattle. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Marianne, I mentioned her earlier. She's the content manager at SWT. She joined uh, SWT earlier this year. Uh, she works in digital marketing and communications. Um, or she before SWT, she worked in digital marketing and communications with Whatcom Museum in Bellingham. Prior to that, she spent seven years as the editor and social media specialist at the Daily Skagit Valley Herald. Uh, Marianne holds a degree in journalism from Western Washington University. Thanks again, Marianne, for all your help on this webinar. I know it was quite a bit. And then Tyra Bleak. Uh, she began managing freehand sellers after working from home and managing her own photography business for 10 years. Tyra is a people person who embodies a spirit of hospitality. I love that, Tyra. Uh, 
Her goal at work is to create memorable experiences for guests at the winery. In addition to wine, Tyra loves gardening uh, and her flowers and veggies can be uh, found on display or plated at Freehand Cellars in the Yakima Valley. Uh, guest speakers, thank you all for being here. I'm looking forward to an engaging uh, discussion today. I, I, we've had a great time putting this together and I hope the audience likes it as well. I think we're doing pretty good on time. Uh, and with that, I'm gonna turn it over uh, to Dylan and uh, Marianne to give a presentation for the first uh, 20 or so minutes. And then we'll bring in Tyra. We'll talk about recommendations for Tyra and then we'll take Q&A from the audience. Dylan and Marianne, over to you. Awesome, thank you so, Matt, so much, Matt. Um, it's great to be here, we're excited. SEO can be actually really fun. Um, and so I hope that when you come out of this presentation, you're excited to start implementing some of these easy tips and tricks um, for your own website. Uh, Dylan and I work together. Um, he has been helping me kind of revamp our SEO strategy in the last couple of months. We've seen a great return on investment in that just with organic traffic. So giving you guys a little bit of a preview, um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we're going to dive into our presentation. So go ahead, Dylan. Yes, of course. Hello, everybody. Welcome to SEO best practices for tourism professionals. Um, let's dive in. So before we go any further, I think it's important that we establish what is SEO. We kind of touched on it already, but it stands for search engine optimization, which is great. We love optimization. So how does it work? Well, let's talk about Google first. And when I talk about search engines here, you're going to hear me and Marianne really talk about Google a lot. Google's the leader of the pack in terms of search engines, but the rest like Bing, Yahoo, um, DuckDuckGo are all important. So in general, how it works is that Google sends out spiders across the web. They're not actual spiders, don't worry, but they basically crawl the entire site and the web and look around for content, links, you name it. Um, as those spiders crawl around, they discover web pages and they say, ooh, what is this? And then they read it and they figure out what it is. Once they figure out what it is, they store it in the index, this is where a lot of us are familiar. This is where we go into the search results pages when you know you type in like, where can I buy a hot dog? For example, that's what pops up. And then uh, your page is ranked. So that's how it basically works in practice. And search engine optimization helps you get closer to the first page. So as I said, uh, Google is a robot spider. It's smart, but it still needs our help. And so best practices for users are generally best practices for SEO as well. So why is SEO important? We already talked about this a bit as well. Matthew touched on it earlier, but SEO is long-term. It's pretty great. Uh, a lot of ads, you can run them. There tends to be a short window, but SEO, once you have good SEO, it sticks around and it keeps on growing. Um, especially if you push content live, generally speaking, we tend to see SEO take effect six to nine months afterward. It's really a snowball, it's a marathon. You'll hear that quite a bit. SEO is also organic. It's natural. You will naturally capture this traffic just by having good content on your website. You don't have to shove it in front of people. They will come to you. Uh, SEO is easier to maintain. Again, if you have SEO involved from your website from the very beginning, uh, it's easy to maintain. You just have to update copy here and there, do some link, link changes there. Um, it's a lot less intimidating than a lot of people think it is. It also boosts your site's credibility. Um, you've experienced it yourself. If you ever like look up something on Google, we tend to look at the top results of the pages. If you get to the top, uh, you'll be more credible. You'll be shown as being more trustworthy. And lastly, it generates more traffic. And how does it do that? So of course, as we mentioned earlier, uh, organic traffic generates about 50 to 93% of most of your web traffic. If you looked in Google Analytics, that's what you probably would see. Um, it's no surprise, Google gets over 5 billion searches every day worldwide. And of these 5 billion searches, most users only stay on the first page. They don't really go any deeper. Google's gotten so much better at serving customized and tailored results to users that they don't need to go to page two. Uh, this is why if you're not toward the top of page one, you generally won't get as much traffic. And here we can see a simple little chart here showing Google's click-through rate. This means the amount of time someone clicks into your site while viewing search results. As you can see, position one, 
makes up the vast majority of click-through rates. And as you go further down, it decreases more and more. Again, this is only for page one. So oh, thanks, Dylan. I'm going to jump in and talk about what goes into SEO. A lot, um, <laughs> generally, <laughs> but it shouldn't be intimidating. I'm going to break it down into a couple buckets um, and go over like a higher level overview. So kicking things off is keyword research, or at least having a keyword in mind um, when you're creating content. Having something from the get-go is going to be great uh, foundationally for you. So this helps you create content about what people already are searching for and what they want to read about, what they're already wanting to discover. Um, and if you do keyword research with either a free or paid tool, um, that will help you see how much traffic a keyword can potentially bring in and how hard it's going to be for you to actually get on that page one. So for example, here we have a dashboard from Moz that shows the keyword things to do in Washington. It shows the monthly search volume and the difficulty rating. Um, and so going off that, you can kind of decide if that is a keyword phrase you'd like to target and create content around. Uh, some, some content um, ideas are gonna be harder to rank for than others. Say, you know, 20 top things to do in Seattle. That probably already has a lot of content out there by some bigger name websites, um, bloggers, et cetera. So you might see that that might be a more difficult term to rank for, and you might want to adjust and go with something else. Moving on to on-page SEO specifically, these are all tactics that you can control on your website. You can do them yourself. Um, some of the key um, requirements are going to be quality keyword-focused content. That's huge. Uh, some title tags and URL, URL optimization also goes into it then you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have internal links, um, good headers and page structure in place, optimized images, and always think about the user experience. Okay, so like I said, content, content, content. Um, Well-written, unique content that answers a searcher's query generally tends to perform well. Um, one of the things to think when writing content is that you want to avoid what Google considers to be thin content or anything under 300 words. Generally, when someone comes to a really tiny, like thin or stump page, they say, oh, this isn't enough. This isn't what I'm looking for. And they, they leave. They bounce away from your website. And you don't want that. You want them to stay with you. So long form content with visuals tends to perform better. Um, with anything between 800 to 2,400 words showing strong results. That doesn't mean you have to write a 2,000 word post if it's not warranted. Don't do that. Don't just, you know, write, put in fluff or any of that stuff. You want to write to what makes sense for you. There is no golden word count. These are just guidelines. Um, another thing to consider is including photos and graphics, especially toward the top of your content to draw the reader in. Um, and then keywords are also so, so important. Um, you want to have those important keywords in multiple places. So the page title, the URL, the image alt tags and subheads, metadata, and we'll dive into some of those topics in a second. Um, but while you're thinking about keywords, you don't want to like overstuff them everywhere. Back in the day, people did that. Google dinged them on it. And so that's a big don't now. What you're looking for is only about a 1% to 2% keyword density for your page. So basically, that means for every 100 words, you want your keyword to appear one to two times. And you want it to be natural. You don't need it in every paragraph. You don't need it in every sentence. Um, so you want it to flow naturally. You don't want to hit the user over the head with your keywords. Um, and also, like mentioned previously, it's a long game. So update and expand old content. You don't have to constantly create new pages about the same thing. Those will actually compete with each other for keywords. So be thinking for annual like events pages or festival pages, uh, annual roundups, like the best things to do type things. You can update those every year using the same page, the same URL, um, and continue to get great return on investment for that. All right, so diving into kind of the headers. Dylan, do you wanna chat about that? Yeah, absolutely. So Marion was just talking about content and keywords. Headers are a great place to insert those. Um, if you ever go to a website, have you ever noticed how you have sort of like your title and then they introduce parts of the content? Those are your headers. Um, you have H1 all the way down to H5, even H6. Um, they're very helpful because they provide a clear page outline for both readers and bots. 
how many of you like to go into a website and just read a wall of text? Show of hands, I actually can't see you, that's a joke. Um, but the <laughs> headers will break up the text for you and make it easier to read. Um, readers don't want to work hard. They want to find information as fast as possible and headers can help with that. On the same vein, these are also essential for readers who rely on screen readers. This is for people with visual impairments. They rely on these screen readers to sort of read the content and break down section by section for them and help them navigate. On that same vein, for this reason, it's important to not use headers as design elements because it can sort of throw off those screen readers and make them think that there's a lot of important stuff in your header or your navigation bar if you're using that for design purposes. Great point, Dylan. So here is kind of just a visual representation of the header structure for a page on our website about visiting Mount Rainier. Um, you have your H1, which is like your main title tag. It's gonna be basically your headline and it is giving Google and readers a sense of what they're gonna get for the entire page. Then you go into H2s, which provide your bigger subheads, your bigger content buckets. And then you have H3s or H4s, which are even smaller little chunks of information that live under those H2 subheads. And this provides, like Dylan mentioned, it's a clear outline for robots and uh, readers. So another um, important component of page design and SEO is adding images. Um, high quality images keep people on pages longer. They, we like to look at pretty things. Um, and so it's important though that when you're adding images to your pages and your website, that you're not just throwing up full size images that are, have really large file sizes. Um, don't add like a 10, 20 megabyte photo. Generally, you want to reduce those to improve page load speed. So our tip is aim for one megabyte or smaller for like big full screen hero images that would like be the first thing you see on a page. Then your smaller uh, images that you see throughout the copy can be as small as like 300 to 500 kilobytes. Um, you wanna make sure you're not losing resolution though. So a lot of photo editing software like Lightroom or Photoshop um, has like a safer web option that you can use that will make a file smaller without losing um, quality. And also there are widgets that you can have in like WordPress that will help you also compress your photos. Another, oh yeah, Tyra, yes, please. So oh, about that, I actually always assumed that my website just like changed it to the proper size on the back end. So that's not true. I need to make sure I'm saving it properly on my end before I upload. Yeah, definitely try to do it before you add it to your website um, to just make sure. You can have plugins, like I said, that will help you compress photos that you've uploaded that are a little big. Um, but no, generally you want to do it before it even gets to your website, just for, just for safety's sake. <laughs> okay. And then I have a question, same, uh, thought pattern here for Dylan, mm -hmm. when he said to not put a design issue or a design element in, um, the H1, the header, does he mean a photo or what do you mean by a design? Like, is that a picture or some, something that you've made in Photoshop, like a graph or whatever? I don't know what that meant, I guess. Is that oh, in the good same question? Screen? Okay. So sometimes you will see designers on a web page use header structure to design the layout. So you'll see bigger text toward the top of the page in your navigation, and it'll look big. The text will look big, and those are all headers in the back end. To people who are just reading the screen naturally, they won't notice, but robots will. So if you have like H3, 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 that can really mess up the flow of your page. So that's what I meant by design. I didn't okay. mean images. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Also, just like don't, if you want a bold text, but it's not an actual like subject header, just use bold. Um, don't at, make it like an H3 or an H4 to make it appear bold because that's actually telling like the crawlers that this is a header and not just like a design styled text. Um, but you probably don't have to worry about that. I don't think you're going in and adding H3s um, into your back end. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but these are really good questions. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, Kind of in the same vein of photos and images, uh, we wanna talk about adding descriptive alt text or alternative text. Um, and basically what that means is on the back end of your website, like in your image library, you can add alt text. For example, and this tells Google and also helps with screen readers um, just describe what the image is and it provides more context for the content on your page. So for example, here um, there's a photo of the Walken Museum in Bellingham. Shout out to my old employer. Um, <laughs> but what I would say for the alt text for this image is like 
the exterior view of the Whatcom Museum in downtown Bellingham. Um, I could add a little more description and call it like a red brick building, but generally you want to give a sense of place too. If you know the proper title, like the proper locations, add those in there. It provides a lot of context for your page. Um, and then lastly, you want to use file names um, for your images that reflect uh, what's, what they're about and not just like gobbledygook, like LLLP97, like don't do that. <laughs> um, all right, and then jumping from images into internal links. Dylan, you want to chat about that? Yeah, absolutely. So, so far we've talked a lot about on-page optimization for SEO, but links are an entire other story. Basically with the internet, Google treats links as sort of a democratic vote for if a page is good. So the, it tends to be that the more links you get, the more Google generally thinks it's a good page. Uh, for the same reason, you can use links internally on your site to help elevate and bring visibility to your content. So you really want to leverage link in links. You want to link to your pages whenever possible. And for this reason, it's important to use proper anchor text. And Marianne, why should we use proper anchor text? Great question. So basically, the words that you choose to link to and from tell Google and readers what to expect when they click through. So for example, on the right-hand side, you'll notice that we have three links that are using anchor text, um, North Cascades, Islands Region, and Chuckanut Drive. And so those are all linking to specific pages within our website that talk about those topics. So the reader knows when they click the Chuckanut Drive anchor text link that they're gonna go learn about Chuckanut Drive. Um, so that's basically it in a nutshell. Can I jump in briefly? Yeah. Cause this is kind of my pet peeve uh, in SEO <laughs> with anchor text. Sometimes you'll kind of have the proper noun and then, and then have like a following sentence that says, click here for the link to that. And that's no, I don't know. Click here is, <laughs> does not help you with SEO at all. If you're going to embed a link and whether it's internal or external, make sure to give that proper noun, the link and not click here. No wow. click here, no Google maps link, none yeah. of that. Okay. No, that's Just, a great, yeah, that is a great point, Matt, because generic links don't, they're not super helpful for, for bots at least. Um, we can kind of discern what they mean as readers but we wanna give the bots as much help as possible. And so example for like a call to action button, if you want someone to uh, do something, instead of saying like, click here, be like download our ebook um, or book your stay. That helps, um, it's still an actionable button, it's still an actionable call to action, but it is more, it's clearer to us and to robots. Um, Dylan, did you want to mention a couple other things before we move on? Yeah, of course. Um, so. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, with these internal links that you're giving us an example of, do they, is this going to make you as a higher rank because you're linking to your own page on Google or it doesn't matter whatsoever? Like it's not really, it's good, it's not good or bad for you as your own page because you're linking within your own website. That's oh no, it's question. definitely, it's definitely good. Oh, okay. You, yes, you do want to link to your own content because it still counts as links to that content. Correct, Dylan? Yeah, that's that's correct. And like, there's a lot of other factors that go into ranking your website, but in general, linking to your pages is good. Um, okay. On that note, though, let's say I, you know, we talk about how linking is important. Um, I would not go in and link to North Cascade 17 times on one page. Um, Google, I mean, SEOs used to do that back in the old days, Google caught on and they dinged us for it. So now they only count the first mention of that link. Uh -huh. So when you link off to the first time, only use the important anchor text. Um, and on that note as well, have it toward the top of the page. Google weighs links toward the top of the page much heavier than links that are all the way toward the bottom. So that's also something else to consider. Perfect, thank you. Um, now on to meta tags and metadata. Dylan, can you chat about that a bit? Yeah, absolutely. So let's say that I typed in, I want to go hiking in Washington. And then this is what I see in the very bottom, trails in Lake Region, attractions in the Cascade Mountains. Um, that large blue thing, that is called a meta title. That is specified on the back end of our website. It is not visible to the user on the front end, but we specify that and tell Google, please display this when someone searches for our page. Underneath it, you can see the meta description. It is this little blurb that entices someone to click in. So these are both very important. The meta title helps users understand what your page is about. The meta description, again, entices them to click into your site. Mentioning keywords here, unfortunately, doesn't really help so much in the meta description. 
Again, SEOs, we have a long history. We, uh, when the first came out, we shoved everything we could into that little blurb to try ranking. Google caught on, womp. So now it's just they bold our keywords for us to like sort of help users click in. So as you can see here, I typed in hiking and the word um, located near Winthrop, the Pipestone Canyon offers stunning hiking. That word is bolded, enticing me to click in. Um, you can also use the snippet optimization tool to preview your results. So there are tools on the internet so you can test these out so you're not being cut off. Yeah, that's a great uh, point. There are like pixel limits and like not necessarily like word count or character limits, but pixel limits. So you only have a certain amount of space to work with when creating your meta titles and descriptions to showcase this little snippet that appears in search results. And can I jump in? Again, yeah. Marianne and Dylan. Yeah, I think this is really important. When I was an SEO analyst uh, with my former employer, this was kind of, it's its a great uh, brain exercise to kind of um, uh, work around that. I, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dylan, 160 character limit for mm -hmm. the uh, meta description for the snippet. Mm -hmm. um, and to kind of like, you know, use the those um, keywords and add those and make sure it's nice and tight and neat. Um, you'll see in the snippet, you'll see kind of um, a, a few run on sentences and ellipsis. Um, and it's going to just, it's just going to be kind of kitty wampus and, and not as kind of uh, nice and neat as it could be, just like this example here. Um, yeah. So again, take advantage of that 160 word limit make sure you're using the right keywords like hiking and um whatever else and, and then also if that's 160 words for the description the actual title also has a character limit too and that's around 60 right dylan or 50 to yes. 60. yeah and it's a pixel limit so uh, pixel limit. google will cut it off as soon as you exceed the pixel width so it fits on your screen in one line Okay. Yeah. But again, it's a, a great brain exercise to kind of synthesize what you're trying to say in a few key words or phrases. Uh, it, again, it, it, it takes time and practice. Um, so good luck with all of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's great because if you don't set this yourself, Google will often just try to pick something random to pull in. And like Matt said, it could be sort of gibberish. It could be fragments of sentences. So you don't want that. Um, but that's basically metadata, high level metadata. Um, next, we have kind of more technical SEO, which is optimizing the back end of your website. So not really the on-page stuff, but it's also super important. And many things go into technical SEO. This is really just like a couple, uh, like three key points, essentially. Um, one is to make sure that your website structure um, and sitemap is easy to follow and is in place. For example, if you don't, you can check to make sure your website has a sitemap, and if it doesn't, there are tools online to create one. So as you can see here, when you append um, the sitemap tag at the, at the back of our URL domain name, you see State of Washington Tourism's sitemap with all of our content linked, how many images it has, when it was last modified. If you were to go in and go to this and put the sitemap.xml at the end of your domain and you got like a 404 error and nothing was there, that means you're in trouble. You want a sitemap. Um, <laughs> the other <laughs> thing to think about is page speed. So this varies, best practice, like best optimal page speed time varies based desktop and mobile, but ideally under three seconds because people have no patience. Um, I know that if I go to a website on mobile and it's taking a long time to load, I will just leave. <laughs> rather than wait. Um, so you can also test your site's page speed with page speed insights. We have a funny just example.com page here, but it will show you your score and it's diagnosing any performance issues. I'm not sure if it's going to load, um, but basically it'll, t it'll give you a score. There we go. Um, and show you any areas that need to be improved, which can be very fun and helpful. Uh, and last but not least, uh, making sure your website is mobile friendly. I believe at least for state of Washington tourism, we have like 70 some percent of people coming to us from mobile devices. So you wanna make sure that you have a content management system that is mobile responsive, such as WordPress or SimpleView or Squarespace. And just to wrap things up, we have some SEO tools that you guys can kind of take note of when, you, um, when we send this presentation out later. 
paid versus free, there are some great options here for you to peruse at your leisure. I'd also so, like to say- Oh yeah, oh, sure, go ahead, Matt. <laughs> sorry. I also like to say, and we might, uh, can you go back one slide, oh, yeah. Marianne? Take advantage of Google Keyword Planner. It's free. I use it all the time, every day. Um, and also Google Analytics. We might kind of, we have time, we can kind of delve into that. But it's one thing to be um, um, pretty proficient in SEO and have a great website. It's another to actually see the results and kind of uh, gauge success on in terms of visits, links, time on site. And to understand that, you really have to understand Google Analytics. That could be its own separate webinar. There's plenty of webinars and helpful uh, information on how to interpret data from Google Analytics when people come and visit your website and how they click around. So that will really tell you if the changes that you make with SEO are actually making a difference. Um, so again, Focus on all of those free things if you have time. And if not, we can kind of talk about uh, hiring someone like Dylan or, 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 or something else. So um, we'll, we'll talk about it a little later, but I'm sorry, Marianne, continue. No, <laughs> that was great. Um, and basically that concludes our presentation. You know, SEO at the end of the day is just about helping people and bots find what they're looking for easier. So in that note, basically the next thing we're gonna do is talk about SEO in practice with Kyra um, with her website, Freehand Sellers. I'm going to stop sharing my screen though, so we can just chat a little bit before we dive into that. Great, thanks again. Great job, Dylan. Um, Tyra, let's kind of turn it over to you. Let's. Uh, why don't you tell the folks on the webinar today a little bit more about the winery, uh, what you do at the Rhine winery? I assume with your uh, photography background. Photos and Facebook and Instagram. I think you told me to do a lot of on those platforms. What do you do in relation uh, with SEO? Okay, so you're you're breaking up a little bit, but I think I got the gist of your question there. Am I am I all clear here with you guys, Lynn? Yeah, you're good. Okay. Um, so my background here at the winery, I've been here for three years, um, in Yakima, the Yakima Valley. Um, and, um, obviously, like I've said, I've come from a photography background. Um, I, so that's like my, I switched over from doing photography because I needed a social life. So I came to a winery. Um, what what greater way to like hang out with people drinking wine and talking with people right so so anyway i've been here um uh, i have pushed my skill of photography through the winery and using that type of medium to reach the public basically and so when i took this job i thought okay i got a major in like displaying our winery well displaying our products well and um pushing my stuff out there through Instagram, through Facebook, which is what I knew or have known in the past. Um, it's a, it was a little bit different than what I did for my photography because I had a blog. And so my main um, goal for my photography business was to make sure that I was writing content so that like I would get pushed to the top of the Google searches. And for some reason, I totally forgot about that. I don't know why, but I just started majoring in like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to present this business, um, in a good light and, you know, the images well put. Um, so I think my biggest thing for wineries in general, because the, like the competition's fierce here, we have so many wineries in the valley. It's it's kind of crazy, right? And so, uh, for me, I kind of break it up with two types of people for who are going to come visit our winery. One is a person who purely they just love wine. They want to come to your winery. They want to taste wine. They don't care what it looks like. They don't care if it's in your garage. They just love wine, and if it's the best wine ever, they're going to buy it, right? But then there's the second person who is the majority of the folks in my opinion and that's the people who are going to be looking on google for the reviews and the stars to see how highly you rank on that and then the secondary thing that they look at is the photos and so that's why i'm like okay I got a major in the photos because people who are looking on Google for ratings or whatever, they're looking at that. Um, and so I guess to follow all of that 
up with how I get my stuff out there, I have a two a two way process, which is I have done nothing with my website. I mean, I have a good website, I think. Um, and I mostly have majored in doing like Instagram and Facebook posts and paid um, posts for events or whatever. Okay. I do I do one post per week and and then I pay to push it out there to the world. And that's basically all I have done the past like two and a half years that I've been here. Uh, now learning from you guys, like literally I'm sitting here like taking notes about SEO on the back end because I know that it's important, but I haven't made it like, you know, I haven't put it at the top of my my sure. list of sure. things. So I'm I'm here to learn just as much as anybody else. I mean, I think I have gotten lucky with just like, I have a beautiful, you know, the winery is beautiful and we have great product and people love wine. So that's all pluses, but obviously this is way, way better. I think, you know. No worries, no worries. So thanks, that's great context. Um, well, let's provide some more context for the audience. So you have a great page dedicated to weddings and events. I think there's a lot of content around that that you can provide on your website, uh, as well as um, lodging, correct? You have one or yeah. two units on site. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so them? we have uh, the previous owner's home is actually like literally in the same driveway as us. And when um, the owners of Freehand Sellers um, bought this place, they decided to transform the location that's like right across the street. And so, I, I mean, we're it's constantly full. Um, and then we also have an airstream on a different part of the property that overlooks like Mount Adams. So you just have views all around and people are just like, they flock to us and stay. And um, yeah, so that's been a great addition to the business as well. Okay, oh, excellent. that's actually a great jumping in point for us, Tyra, because we were looking at your website. It's great. You have a bunch of fun content. Um, but I was only able to find your lodging options on your planning, your trip page. And those linked off to Airbnb, correct? Yeah, that's right. That's okay. like, I've never done anything more with that because I thought in my head, like, okay, that's where I'm supposed to point them. Like, you know, they need to go there. I don't, I don't need them here anymore because we don't do any of the, you know, the reservations. Yeah, you don't do direct bookings on your website. No, that makes sense. Um, but so one thing that Dylan and I are going to show you is we found a couple of optimization opportunities for your website as a whole because, and let me share my screen with you guys again so we can kind of look at this in real time. So basically, you have this beautiful website homepage, and right at the right front and center, you mentioned a tasting room, an event space, and lodging. But as far as I could tell, you did not have separate dedicated pages for tasting or lodging. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a fun way to kind of get um, website traffic and visibility without even having to necessarily focus on wine in some regard. You're going to find people searching for like wine experiences. But our recommendation for you is to create two landing pages. And this actually is not going to take that much time because they are not going to be a 2000 word blog post. So, um, but you're going to go in it with all of those SEO tips and tricks that we just went over. So our two recommendations is to A, create a wine tasting landing page that talks about the wine tasting experience and what to expect at your property. And then you'll link to that page from your homepage with the anchor text tasting room. And so people can just click right through there easily. Um, and another thing that we've actually mocked up for you is creating a lodging landing page to showcase those beautiful properties you were talking about. Um, and you can optimize um, for keywords like where to stay in Yakima wine country. We did a little bit of keyword research for you. Um, and then you're gonna also wanna link to that from the lodging text on your homepage. And then you'll have two new um, content pillars basically that are optimized for search and that people can easily find. So Tyra, um, does that, how does that sound to you to begin with? Yeah, that sounds great. So I guess my one follow-up, you said to link. So on my, um, on my page there where it says tasting room, event space, lodging, should those be links right there then, right when they get there? Like it's yes. like they hover over and they see it. Exactly. Yeah. My um, desire as a user is to click on those things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So 
that's, making it easy is, is key. Yeah. It's so, it's so obvious. Like now us talking about that, that's how, that's actually how I would do it too, but I don't have it on my own page. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, this is great. Cause we don't technically like thinking of things from like a user experience per, per, um, is not necessarily supernatural for everybody unless they're in it, you mm -hmm. know? Um, but just when you're thinking about like the page design and SEO, think like, what would make the most sense for me? Like, what would I, what would I like to see? What would I want to do? Um, and then you can kind of implement it on the back end of your site. So for example, when Dylan and I were talking about keyword research, um, where to stay in Yakima wine country was something that had um, low competition and a decent amount of search volume, not a ton, but decent in the grand scheme of keywords related to Yakima wine. Um, and so basically this page shows a mock-up of what you could then take this copy and content and put it on a page. Um, so the keyword or key phrase in this instance would be like where to stay in Yakima wine country. And since it's only, this is like a 600, 700 word piece. So we have the keyword, like I think six times. So that's a 1% density, which is good. It's distributed naturally. You're not putting it in every paragraph. As you can see, we're scrolling down and we're not putting it in every paragraph. We're not putting it in every header, but it's enough that Google will understand that, hey, this is the, this is what we're talking about here. Um, and yeah, and also I dropped in, you know, where you could add photos, like right before the staying in Yakima wine country section, right before each of your units, because they're beautiful. I am going, I want to book them now. I was stalking your Airbnb listings. So <laughs> <laughs> they're beautiful. Okay. And I use your beautiful photos here. But remember to also use the alt tag. So like if you're looking at like a hot tub over a vineyard, you're going to want to describe exactly what that is and say like in the Yakima Valley, that type of thing. Um, and then also like we're using our in links um, up, up top, actually, sorry for all the scrolling, um, but you have a plan your visit page. So um, I've linked plan your visit in the second paragraph and that's going to another page on your website. Okay. And then let's pretend when you have your wine tasting page up that we're going to link it here okay. also. So now you're sending traffic within your site and you're also linking off to your actual Airbnb listings for bookings okay. here. That's and you super can actually, cool. Yeah, you could actually add like a book now, like book your wine country stay button like two in this page if you really want like your call to action to stand out, if you want them to go through and book on Airbnb, you can pull that out as well. Sure. So is this how you would typically write something for your page um, in general for your business is you would do it all on a Word document like this and be like, okay, here's where I'm going to put a photo. Here's my meta before you even, because me on a whim who doesn't have a ton, ton of time and I'm doing like landscaping over here. I'm, you know, hooping cases of wine over here. Like I'll just like, okay, sit down. I'm going to write this out. Like, is this this looks so organized. It's amazing. And maybe oh, it's inspired to be. No, for sure. I always outline my content with a keyword in mind. Um, and then I do my structure and I, you know, I look at my word count. I look at my keyword density. I figure out where I'm putting my links. And then I am going to write my meta description and meta titles as well. I do all this before I even put it in like WordPress or whatever content management system you have. And then once it is in there, though, if you have like an SEO plugin like Yoast, it will score your content. It'll be like, this is great, but it could improve by maybe putting another keyword in or maybe putting a keyword in another header. Um, and you need to add the keyword in the alt or the alt tags for your images, you know, that type of thing. It'll offer suggestions. So I do recommend the Yoast SEO plugin. Uh, Dylan, do you know if that's specific only to WordPress or? Um, I do know that other um, content management systems, they sort of are working on getting those integrations there. So there are many other different ones you can choose from, not just Yoast. Yeah. So basically, that's 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 a wrap, Tyra. Um, this is kind of some easy optimization areas um, to just supplement the content that you're already doing really well on your website. That's and yeah, you don't have to write like I saw someone in chat being like everyone writes on the fly. I do feel like that is also like, yeah, definitely just do what makes sense to you. Um, everyone has their own process. Um, we're all very busy. <laughs> so yeah, great.
So I, I have one question about like um, creating new content and stuff for a web page that's like your basic web page like mine. Like I have like certain pages and there's not really a ton to add to it all the time. So recently I was thinking, well, maybe I need to like activate, I don't know what a it's A blog, called. start a blog, start yeah, a blog. Yeah, a blog. <laughs> so uh, we do Squarespace and number one should i just keep it hidden from everybody's eyes and it should just be like on the back end but i have like good content it's written well it's not just like slapped up there or should i make it live or is there a different way to do it i don't i, I don't know that's like three questions i'm sorry it's kind of conjumbled but <laughs> maybe you get the gist so i would definitely if you're going to go to the effort of creating and writing blog content, you definitely want to have a section on your site where people can easily find it because okay. they don't always come at you from search. They may arrive at your homepage and would find your blog content really helpful, but if they can't find it in the navigation, then you're not gonna start getting any traffic on that. Google won't understand that people are looking at it, won't understand it's important. So always mm -hmm. add to your site navigation if you're creating a new section, like a blog page. You could call it like, um, wine inspiration, or I don't know what you would want to call it, but generally I would, I would add it to your site navigation so people can easily find it from anywhere. Okay. Great. Does that help Tyra? I think so. Yeah. I, I just like, for me, I'm always like, what can I add to my site? And I know that you like came up with some really great pages and, and that sort of thing, but it's sometimes like, I just, I, there's nothing new to put on there, I guess, like, except for changing the wine because it's a different vintage. And so I'm, I'm like, okay, I think I need to start talking about like, uh, you know, five of the best views in Yakima or something like that, because then people are, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. You're giving me well, that. There's, <laughs> you don't no, want so no. much about Yakima. You want to focus on you. Like, you know, talk about uh, tours at your winery, overnight stays, wine winemaker pairings, series, here, wine histories. Yeah. Series. I mean, this is like, this you is can the find a stuff. lot of content. I bet actually yeah. that oh, is close sure. to your, to your, to close to home. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to reach too far. Plus, remember we said SEO is a long game. So if you have optimized pages um, for all of your like pillar content, your your big primary content buckets, people are going to just continue to find those. Okay. Um, you don't necessarily need a blog. You could start one if you wanted to, right. but you can just optimize the pages that you currently have. Yeah, and it's important. I mean, it's it's uh, quality over quantity. Just don't make a whole bunch of pages and blog posts really kind of focus on quality content okay. that is well-written, that has all the, the nuts and bolts that we just talked about for SEO. Yeah, so okay. always keep that in mind. Okay, folks, we're, we're at the 10 minute mark, 10 till uh, 11. This is the time for Q&A. Please use the Q&A feature. Uh, you can also pop them in the chat. I see one question in the chat uh, from Mary. Um, these questions can be directed at Marianne, Dylan, or Tyra. I can also try to answer them too. I have a little bit of a, a SEO background, but Mary says, is it optimal to make pictures clickable? Is it optional to make pictures clickable? Can I answer that one? Yeah, I figured that would be right up your alley, Dylan. <laughs> so is it optimal to make pictures clickable? In many instances, yes, it is. Um, and funny enough, alt text, um, what you write to describe the picture, uh, just like with links, what you write for the alt text will also be pushed to the page you link to. So you, if you're on the wine tasting page and you're linking off to lodging and you have a picture of the lodging itself, uh, if you write the alt text and have lodging keyword in there, Google will attribute that picture and the image to that page. So really think about um, if it matters for your user, but if you have a picture that belongs on your page's content, and it's not really natural to make it clickable and go someplace else, just leave it in the page. It really depends on a page by page basis. Cool, excellent. I see a few questions in the q and I'll bring those up. Heather, I'm gonna save your question uh, for the end. We can talk about Google and algorithms at the very end. Uh, Angie Evans. Um, Angie's from the Bremerton Community Farmers Market. Welcome, Angie. Um, how do we change the meta title and description so, so that it shows up on Google search? Do we do that or, uh, and, and Angie uses Wix or do we do that? 
controller uh, manager. Sorry, Matt, I think you're, you're freezing and cutting out a tiny oh. bit. Um, but to paraphrase, I Sorry. think he was just asking, where do you do the meta titles and descriptions? And the answer to that is in your content management system. So like Wix or WordPress, that is where you would be adding that info. And then it will show up on Google. But like we said before, the, the people on your actual page, your readers don't see that. That's just in the back end. Dylan, have you ever worked with Wix? Um, I have not, but I am looking at a how to add um, metadata to a Wix page and it is on the website. They do have an SEO editor. Uh, so you should be all green to go, Angie. Perfect. That's awesome. Because my experience with content management systems or CMSs has generally been WordPress um, or craft. So I can't speak to Wix personally, but I am sure there is a way like Dylan said. I actually did not realize right. that the metadata was um, live to everybody on the internet. <laughs> I thought this was also just a back end thing where I was like alt text or something like, okay, I'm just going to put this in here. But now that you guys have showed me, I'm like, oh, okay, I understand now what that is. Because they give you an example on the back end. If you get to that spot, like they show you how it's going to show up. But I was like, I, I don't know really what that means, you know? So that's really cool. Yeah, that's the little snippet that kind of is the gateway into your content and draws the reader in. So, yeah, it's really great if you can personalize that. But people, We'll likely see it, yes. Yeah. Awesome. And the, let's talk about that just a little bit more. Um, because meta tags, uh, titles, and descriptions was new to me. And again, I spent most of my time, other than kind of just checking for spelling and grammar, coming up with pitching uh, content ideas, I spent a lot of time writing those titles and descriptions. And again, it's a, it's a brain exercise to synthesize um, all of these keywords and phrases into 160 characters or um, 60 characters. And I guess what I'm, I, my other little kind of uh, tip recommendation today that I didn't mention earlier is to use um, the vertical pipe or the, is it pipe? Dylan, do you, is there another special word for it? It's, it's I what's in the pipe. the pipe. Yeah. It's, it's in my uh, name and title on, on the Zoom right now. You'll see Matthew Ozuna, vertical pipe, state of Washington tourism. So I began to utilize that and I didn't even know what it was for, but I mean, it, it's better than a colon. It's better than a comma. Um, and and, and uh, feel free to kind of utilize that, utilize that in your uh, creative brainstorming uh, uh, sessions for uh, meta titles and descriptions. And Matthew, why it's so important too is because it is vertical. It's so thin. It adds very little to the overall yes. pixel count. That's what I, that's, that's it, Dylan. Thank you. I knew there was another technical reason to use it and I forgot. No. Cool. Any other, before we have one or two more questions, any other um, tips or tricks that were not mentioned that guest panelists would like to share briefly today? I just thought one thing that I did learn about that, how you said the pixel width of the, of your meta uh, title is like the first few words should be the best words of you know, whatever you're trying to say, because eventually it just gets cut off and then it's like dot, dot, dot. And so oftentimes for me, I'll just be like, oh, I'll just be like, you know, doing this gibberish talk, but really it should be so directed. And I'm, I'm not normally like that, but it needs to be now moving forward. Excellent. I agree. All right. Let's go to Heather's question. So this is kind of a technical question. Dylan, maybe you might be able to answer this. Um, how do folks uh, how do folks learn about uh, updates to Google kind of with algorithms and, and things like that and how does that affect SEO and ranking? Great question. Um, there are so many different ways to find out. You can talk to your friends down the street. Just kidding. Um, best way generally is uh, you can look online. Uh, usually at Twitter it actually is a great resource. You'll see SEOs talking about Google updates. Search Engine Journal is also a great location. Google itself is a great source. They'll often let you know when an update has just came out. So if you even type in like Google most recent algorithm change, like here's my hands typing, um, you can even find the most recent one in many cases. And unfortunately, these big updates are like a mass shuffling. Uh, it's Google's chance to really reprioritize what they think is best for users. And Matthew, this is probably where analytics comes in, right? This is where you can see what is happening on your end. I agree. Um, I have no other questions in the chat or Q&A. 
Uh, we have three minutes left. Any more questions from the audience? Is there a question, uh, Tyra, that you'd like to ask Marianne or Dylan? Or Dylan, is there a question you'd like to ask Marianne or Marianne ask Dylan before we leave today? Well, I do have one question that you had mentioned in the beginning. You're like, okay, if your um, CEO is good on the back end, like it's it um, will continue to just be better and better. And I wondered if you, what you mean by that, do you do any copying and pasting of like keywords to other work, like other sites or they're all different? I mean, not sites, I'm sorry, other pages within your site or are they all going to be different per page? Aha, uh -huh. great question. This is where Marianne also can hop into. Um, basically on your website, you wanna have one page talking about the keyword you're trying to target. Um, it's just best for Google to help find the one page. It's like if you're shopping for Cheerios, if you ever go to a store and you see the Cheerios and you see like another off-brand, another off-brand, another off-brand, it can be overwhelming. We just want the Cheerios. So just keep it on one page and just, that way Google can just grab the name brand. That makes another, sense. Yeah, another point is like, you don't wanna compete with yourself for the same keywords. So if you are using the same keyword on multiple pages, Google's not gonna know really which page to serve people for search results. Okay. Uh, okay. So you can use different variations or phrases or sort of related keywords. So like you could do wine tasting and then wine tours and then like wine country lodging. Like those are all different. Um, but yeah, I would avoid using the same keyword on multiple pages. And is that true also for alt text for photos as well? It should all be different. Like you're not going to, you know, do repetition in terms of I mean, you, a lot of it, so it describes the image. So every image is gonna be slightly different, right? So you're changing your alt text based on whatever is being shown in the image. So I, I doubt that you're gonna have the exact same alt text for multiple photos, but that's mm -hmm. a good question. Sure. Okay. And Christy is right in the comments, uh, make it yes, easy for accessibility. Exactly. Yeah, for accessibility, you want to describe the photo as accurately as possible. So you wanna be writing new alt text copy for every single image. Okay. Well, thanks yep. folks. We're about out of time. We have one minute left. Thank you panelists. Thank you uh, audience. Uh, we had a great time. I got a lot out of this webinar. I hope you did as well. Remember this will be recorded. It will sent, be sent to you via email. There'll also be a uh, post webinar survey. Survey. We'd love to get your feedback on that as well. Uh, and stay tuned for our next Tourism Skill Shop in July. It will focus on the Tread app. Uh, for users, land managers, and uh, industry partners linked to outdoor recreation. Uh, it's a one-stop app for uh, trail maintenance, um, conditions, uh, where to plan a hike, anything and everything related to trails and the outdoors. And it's the perfect time to dive into that with the height of the summer hiking season. So again, uh, be on the lookout for that. More info to come in July. And thanks again, everyone. Take care. Talk to you soon.